there is a new smart watch in town, a watch for the blind. And this was one of the attractions at the just concluded Nairobi Innovation Week. Starting Corporation is uh, making products for the blind and visually impaired people. The reason why we came to Kenya is to launch the, the world first Braille smartwatch, Dot Watch. In collaboration with Safaricom, Dot launched the smartwatch last year. And this is how it can help the visually impaired. You can read all the notifications on your smartphone, such as M-Pesa. They can read how much money you receive and how much money you withdraw with this. And that has been transformational in terms of people who couldn't initially read SMSs. Now they're able to interact and get SMS transactions. It's already in production. It's being sold in our shops. And what we do is we sell it at cost. We are looking at subsidizing to sell it at 50% of the actual cost. The collaboration is expected to impact positively on the manufacturing sector in Kenya. Based on our MOU with the Kenya Union of the Blind, they help us to build assembly line, not only assembly line, the factory here in Kenya. Robots are also on the way. Our um, main plant in Kenya would be um, delivering this robot to the schools, um, including the special schools. So this robot can actually um, solve the problem that, for example, not having enough uh, native English teacher. The annual Nairobi Innovation Week, now in its fifth year, is a meeting point of startups, innovators, entrepreneurs, enablers, established companies, government agencies, and academia to showcase their innovations products, programs, and services, all contributing to the growing of the innovation ecosystem in the region. As government and uh, through my ministry, we have what is called the white box, where if you have an innovation that can work for government, you bring it to the white box and we will see how best to work with you. Under the public service, we seek to improve efficiency and effectiveness the way service delivery is provided. Therefore, we see that even the government is very keen to consume innovation just to deliver better and to deliver value for its people. Kenya has over 17 million youth in schools and almost another million in universities and mid-level colleges. That makes 18 million. So as we do innovation, are you training these people? Are you empowering them to be holistic in the training so that when they come out, they actually employ themselves and provide employment for others? Well, we brought nine Korean startup companies here, and then uh, all of them uh, have their own ideas and innovative solutions. The Korean economy has been developed based on those innovations. So uh, we brought them to Kenya uh, so that they can build uh, uh, relations and they can build a bridge between Korea and Kenya. And then they can bring their own uh, innovative ideas to Kenya so that the Kenyan companies and Kenyan people uh, can enjoy. We have solar cow system to bring the kids to school using the solar energy. Like rural areas in Kenya, we don't have electricity. And many families, they cannot get the electricity. And you have to use the cell phones, but then you need to go all the way to the town, town area to charge it. But now, with the power bank, they get the electricity. Uh, my company is, uh, is provide the visual communication solution. We call it GoTouch. The GoTouch turn any surface into a interactive whiteboard. The other companies at the Korean Pavilion were Gini Robot that teaches coding through the use of robotics, Syntech, which showcased its online booking software, and Luxrobo, a tech company championing smart education using IoT technology. At the same time, the Korea Trade and Investment Promotion Agency conducted a hackathon competition with the competing teams being supported by three of the Korean startups to come up with new innovative ideas using Korean technology. A-best ideas are, will be selected and awarded. And uh, those best ideas are expected to develop into products and services by global companies. 
This partnership opened doors for various Kenyan companies who seized the opportunity by entering into business agreements with some of the Korean startups. The whole idea is to see how we can work with the Korean trade, with the Korean uh, agencies to harness the latest technologies in improving learning outcomes and specifically looking at the Big Four agenda. All this is part of knowledge sharing between South Korea and Kenya. And remember, South Korea's transformation is a case study across the world and it achieved that transformation because of implementing knowledge-based economy. For KTN News, I'm Alex Chamada of Chams Media at the University of Nairobi.